So, I'm finally back home. I honestly recorded a bunch of videos. So the videos you probably saw this weekend were videos I uploaded in preparation for me leaving for the weekend. But anyways, we have Topaz's character preview. Um, one of the things to note is we'll talk about her light cone as well and why I will be personally skipping the light cone. We'll get into that. Uh, I have a really solid reason as to why. But first of all, we all know she is a single target damage dealer hunt character. Um, before we actually do get further into this video, I want to let you all know that I am making a guide for Topaz. I'm making an in-depth guide. I'm currently scripting the video. So if you want to see anything specifically, please do let me know in the comment section down below. But anyways, let's get into it. Again, I will be making a guide for Topaz. So we'll go over all this in-depth indie guide. But as you probably already know, she deals follow-up attack damage with all of her hits. So her basic attack, her elemental skill, and her ultimate doesn't do damage, but it does enhance the follow-up attack damage. So this is her first trace. Her second trace allows her and Numbi to do more damage against enemies with fire weakness. So that means you really, really, really do want to bring her against enemies that are weak to fire. Now, we'll go into why this is very important for Topaz. So that means a character like Himiko is probably going to be best in slot with Topaz majority of the situations when enemy is weak to fire. And then the third trace, whenever Numbi attacks enemy within the windfall bonanza state, <laughs> windfall bonanza, Topaz will uh, generate ren energy. So regenerating energy is pretty good for the character. Um, you can use a character like Ting Yun with her to get her ult faster. I personally will not be using Ting Yun. I'll be using Asta majority of the time and Bronya in some situations. But Ting Yun is still a very solid option if you want her to have her ult constantly. She's pretty good in those hyper carry teams. So one of the coolest things about this character is she's kind of the first character I can say where we have a Nahida like passive, the Nahida from Genshin Impact, where she's useful in the overworld. Um, you know, I'm not saying useful in terms of like maneuvering around the overworld, right? Moving fast like Yukong down Hang Paper to the Night, but useful in the sense of her kit provides some utility outside in the overworld and being able to, you know search for treasures is really really nice i like this about the character because you get some additional credits which for many new players this is pretty huge so the debuff that the enemy has which is unremovable by the way so it doesn't count as a debuff where you need effect hit rate for well that whenever an enemy is attacked by that ally with a follow-up attack then numbi will be pushed up with the action forward but i'm pretty sure you all know that at this point so the windfall bazanza is a part of topaz Zol, which increases the damage numbi does to the enemy this is really nice. Now, one of the things to take into consideration is like Clara, we have a certain amount of attacks before the actual damage enhancement goes away. So probably two to three. I'm going to lean and say two, just like Clara, which isn't that much. I would like to see three, a little higher number, but it is still pretty nice nonetheless, because this is additional damage on top of the damage Numbi and Topaz already does. So now we can finally talk about Topaz's Lycoon, and I'm going to be skipping this Lycoon for sure. Even though it has a really nice cover art, and as you all know, Topaz is a fan of little cute animals. So that's why you see a bunch of little animals in the cover art. I really thought these were a bunch of plushies, which I, I wouldn't be surprised if she has a room full of little animal plushies, maybe Pokemon plushies like me. That's kind of weird. I don't know why I'm telling you guys this. But anyways, it's a nice light cone art nonetheless. Now, one of the most important things is that it is a five-star light cone. So you're going to get really high base stats, which goes towards adding more attack to Topaz. She's a character that has lower base attacks. So having a five-star light cone option like this is going to increase her damage greatly because she will have higher stats than if she had a four-star one. Or the Herda Shop Light Cone, for instance, which is less stats overall. Now, it does give her an increase in crit rate, and she does get crit rate traces, so 30% crit rate added to the character for just having the Light Cone is very, very solid. That makes building the character a lot more easier, right? Because if you want to achieve that 80% crit ratio, then having this Light Cone will make it much easier. Now, the follow-up attack damage that she does and Numbi does too will be increased by 30%. So that's a huge chunk of extra damage added to the character's kit. Um, that's pretty much the best part of the passive there is the create and the fall attack damage. So this is just going to boost the Topaz and Numbi's damage overall. Now, whenever the Wary uses, so whenever Topaz and Numbi does a fall attack, then which remember, Topaz's whole kit counts as fall attack. So she can proc this on her own turn. And then you apply the tame state to the target that she hits. And that goes up to two stacks and then every stack that the tame state of the enemy has then the crit damage dealt to that enemy will increase by 12 percent so you get up to 24 percent crit damage increase by all allies in the team party for just hitting that enemy target that has the tame stack this is really 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 strong for situations where you want to use her as a sub dps and hyper carry honestly because this does increase her damage greatly so this will be her best in slot white count and being very good in team comms where you use a character like, you know, Clara, 
Kafka even, right? I mean, Kafka does not do crit, but if you're doing like a crit cut build, you could utilize this. Himiko especially will love this, right? And other characters in the future, right? That deal fall attack damage. Now, funny enough, this Forcer Light Cone will actually be really good in the character. It gives an attack increase, right? When she already has a low base attack. And then it does give crit rate whenever there's two or fewer enemies on the field. If you plan to use her in mostly single target scenarios, which again is where I believe she will excel. It's a little bit of a fun fact. This used to be a light cone you can get from a weekly boss drop and you could buy it from the memories at Chaos Shop as well. But they ended up nerfing it because it was too strong. Not nerfing the passive, but nerfing it and putting it in the gotcha four star light cone option, right? Whenever you roll on the five star light cone banner. So this was really good for an option you could just get higher finance for. Because getting higher refinements with that crit rate, right, and the attack was really good for hunt characters. One of the reasons why I'm actually skipping Topaz's 5-star Lycone is because there is really solid options already in the game that she can utilize. With her being a character and number 2 that only use follow-up attack damage, damage boost is going to greatly increase the damage of the character, right? Damage deal increases by, which counts as elemental damage boost for the character. So this is going to be very solid on the character, and you don't have to go for a 5-star light cone. Now, do keep in mind, this does not buff the allies in the team party, so you're not going to be giving them a up to 24% crit damage increase whenever they hit the enemy, but this is still going to be a solid light cone nonetheless on the character. If you're looking to use her as a main damage dealer, it even subs DPS scenarios, because she still does increase the damage that allies deal with fall attack. And there is some general buffing 5-star standard light cones like this one, so like the dead, which is still a solid option in the character nonetheless. You do get 30% crit damage, which helps with statting for the character overall. And you get a 36% crit rate bonus at refinement one if your attack does not crit. And considering she does a bunch of multi-hits with Numbi, you're going to proc this and get a crit rate for your next attack. So it's very solid on the character nonetheless. The reason why I cannot recommend Topaz Light Cone, even for people that are dedicated to the character, is because first and foremost, the Light Coon banner is a trap for anyone that ends up being unlucky. Now, the second thing is that the fact that her Light Coon is geared towards her, and since she is a character that is very niche, what if one day you just not enjoy playing the character anymore? We come from the game Genshin Impact, and I'm sure you're all familiar with that. There is plenty of characters that I have gotten in Genshin Impact that I don't play anymore, and I even rolled for their weapon, one of those characters being Eula. He was a character I don't enjoy anymore and I ended up rolling for a weapon and I don't use the character so now I have a character with a weapon that is very niche and has no value in my account. But if I was to roll for Ayaka, which I do have Ayaka and I have Mist Splitter, well I don't enjoy playing Ayaka anymore but I can at least put my Mist Splitter on Kashyyyk, characters like Kaya, and even characters like Bennett if you have him C6. So that means I have a weapon that is more viable on many characters instead of being viable on one character. So you see where I'm trying to go with this. Topaz's light cone is only viable on her. So if you were to roll for the character and get her light cone, and someday you just don't enjoy playing the character, well, you have one light cone that is never going to be viable in any other character. Because we're definitely not going to get a fall attacker that is a part of the hunt category ever, aside from Topaz. Now, I recommend going for In the Night, because even if you don't use Seal, this light cone is still very good in every other hunt damage deal, except for Topaz, right? Because she's a very niche character. So future characters of the hunt category will probably be able to utilize this light cone. Now, just looking at Topaz, right? She's a character that only does damage with follow-up. So that means she is a very unique and very niche character. So many of these light cone options, like this one, for instance, would never work in a character. Now, if they do continue to make characters like Topaz, which in my opinion is kind of scummy, if I'm being honest. If they continue to make characters like Topaz, then light cones like this would have a lot less value. And their five-star light cones would end up being much more better in comparison to any other option for that character. So then we're entering a we're entering a future where light cones are very, very niche, and the characters are also niche as well because their kits are very specific in what they do and how they operate as a character. Now I know what you also might be thinking. Well, Toshi, what if I get her light cone because I plan to use her as a sub DPS supporter in my team comps with Jing, for instance? or other follow-up attackers like Clara. I don't plan to use her as a main DPS long-term, but her light cone still provides damage to the team. Well, you can go for it, but in my honest opinion, you honestly get more value just rolling for a new character, a new supporting character, than just getting her light cone altogether. Because Topaz still ends up giving a damage boost to the allies that deal follow-up attack damage. Now, she doesn't give a 24 crit damage bonus without her light cone, but having a 
high damage increase for those allies like Jing and Clara who deal most of the damage of follow-ups is going to take advantage of Topaz in the team comp anyways. So it's not even like you need her 5-star limited light code. Instead, you can take those pulls and spin it towards a character like Silverwolf who is going to enhance your account even further because she is a direct upgrade for your account as a support character, offensive supporting character, just like Topaz. And she also is a character that fuels the Mono Quantum team comp, which is a comp I highly endorse on this channel. Now, lastly, if you were to just go ahead and roll for the light cone, regardless of what I say, you're like, you know what, screw you, Toshi. I'm going to roll for the light cone because I don't care what you're saying. Do keep in mind one thing. You could still miss the light cone. You could still miss the light cone and end up getting something you did not want or could not use on your account. You have a 75% chance of getting that five-star rate up light cone. That means you have a 25% chance of getting one of these standard banner light cones, which mind you, you can get from the standard banner, which you probably will get at some point, and you can just buy it from the shop if you save up enough star glitter. So that means if you have all of these light cones or you have most of them and you get a dupe for the light cone, you're going to be very, very, very disappointed because that is pointless to have on your account. And considering, well, you take those 65 pulls and just put it towards a new character like Jing Lu, for instance, or another support character instead of her five star light cone. Well, then you would have more progress towards actually getting that new character, because even if you lose your 50 50 on the character banner, well, at least you still have pools going towards that next limited character. So again, there's too many cons when it comes to rolling for a Topaz limited light cone. It is honestly the first time where I do not recommend a light cone for a damage duo like her because it is too niche and it has no value long term. It has no value long term unless you honestly plan to use her as a support going forward in the future. But even then, you could just use those pools and roll for a new support character if that makes sense. That is going to be the video here. I hope you got something out of this. I tried to make this as honest as possible. Um, as you know, someone that constantly endorses the character and is constantly hyping up the character, I'm not going to bullshit to you guys. You just should not roll for the light cone. Save your pools for a new character. Save your pools for a very much more viable light cone like Seals in the Night. Or just go for a Seal in directly, right? Because she is still a very nice character with Quantum Element. That has a lot of value in Monoquan, in my honest opinion. So that means I would just go for two characters instead of going for a character in the light cone. Now, the reason I mention that is because I've watched Enviosity, who is a Genshin Impact and Honkai Star streamer, Hoiver streamer in general, and he does not roll for light cones. Now, that had me a little curious as to why, but I realized that he ended up getting more characters, progressing his account long term, and he has a much more fulfilled roster because he has more characters instead of having more light cones for those characters. On top of that, that means whenever he gets bored with a character and doesn't want to use them, well, if he didn't roll for their light cone and that light cone was very niche for the character, think of Song of Broken Pines for Eula. Well, you have not wasted pools in your account, then you can just, you know, go on about, you know, your account instead of crying that you wasted double the pools instead of wasting half the pools, if that makes sense. That's the video here. Thank you for watching and have a nice rest of your day. Peace.